Johnson Pledge. Pledge for waxed beauty instantly as you does. Pledge. see one. And when I see one, I'll let you know. Good night. <laughs> oh, I feel good. I really feel very, very happy. And we have a show tonight that you won't believe. But please try. <laughs> I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I call you ladies and gentlemen, I'm only guessing. <laughs> I have an announcement to make before I go any further. Will the person who owns the car with the license number 278X1495 6W2H 73K5, please remove it. The car is okay, but the license plate is blocking the driveway. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the news, but it's terrible. The white knight was just fired. They caught him riding side saddle. <laughs> and not only that, but this morning it was announced that the jolly green giant just got married, and now he's not so jolly anymore. <laughs> Everybody's getting married. Justice Douglas just married a young girl. Sinatra just married a young girl. <laughs> Gee, I can't wait till I get old. <laughs> and how about that Cary Grant having a baby at his age? I think it's wonderful. He became a father and applied for Medicare the same day. <laughs> and now, let's get on with the show, ladies and gentlemen. I, don't look now. Look, there's a guy, there's a guy sleeping out there. Look at this. <laughs> Last night, last week, there was a woman down here breading a veal cutlet. <laughs> she was throwing the flour. Is this your wife, sir? Uh, well, what are you going to do? Now, uh... <laughs> See, that's why they put erasers on, on, on pencils. <laughs> Look at this guy reading the paper down here. Stop. <laughs> Look at this paper. <laughs> Lindbergh lands in Paris. <laughs> Want to make a bet on the Dempsey Tunny fight? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure now at this time to present our first star because we got a long show and the salary is very short. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present these two thrilling words? Here she is, Phyllis Diller. <laughs> too good. I drove through a car wash with the windows open. <laughs> Terrible thing happened to me again last night. Nothing. <laughs> no, I take that back. Something awful did happen. A peeping Tom called me on the phone hysterically begging me to draw my shades. <laughs> he said he was eating. There's no way around it. I've decided the only way to get out of bed every morning with a big smile on your face is to go to bed with a hanger in your mouth. Because <laughs> you wonder why I'm driving this covered wagon tonight with poor manpower. <laughs> I had to give up driving. It is, it's the bane of my existence. It is so bad, you don't know. And Fang, that's my husband, the idiot, <laughs> constantly nagging me about my first trip downtown. And I, I have admitted I was not ready for downtown. And I got news, downtown was not ready for me either. <laughs> At least I had made some preparation. They hadn't done a darn thing. <laughs> I had collected maps. I had uh, weather reports. I had a compass. I even had a bucket of sand. 
If I hit anything, I was going to cover it up. I learned that from a cat. So the night before my big trip downtown rolls around, my idiot friend Fang rolls home loaded to the gills. Very funny, he's got these gills. I don't know what they are. <laughs> and he drinks like a fish. <laughs> oh, he gets so high, he won't drink without a net under him. <laughs> you could chin yourself on his breath. <laughs> so he comes home loaded to the gills, puts the car in the garage backwards. Well, that shot the heck out of my map. <laughs> So I come out of the house the next morning, happy as a lark, with a hanger in my mouth. <laughs> Drove out the wrong end of the garage. <laughs> Took the scenic route. <laughs> Threw the knotty pine. <laughs> turned onto a one-way street that wasn't going my way. <laughs> Everybody in America is coming this way except me and one other woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love that old broad. <laughs> she was following me. In fact, she had driven through our garage. <laughs> Darn good thing I opened it up for her. Because she was dragging a fence. <laughs> and a chaise lounge with a kid on it. And I don't think it was her kid. <laughs> As I got news, he didn't want to go. <laughs> how upset people get in traffic. You'd think they had never before seen a woman with a hanger in her mouth. <laughs> and a little bit of naughty pine on her car. <laughs> Followed by a perfectly normal old broad dragging a fence. <laughs> and a chaise lounge with the kid who's a little upset. One man said, lady, you ought to have your license taken away. I said, I haven't got one. Ha! <laughs> ah, where in the world would I get a license? I got two tickets on my written test. <laughs> now that I have this darling rig, I don't have to worry. I'm taking driving lessons, but they're no good at all. My teachers are yellow. First one developed the worst stutter I ever heard in my life. By the time he told me I was going to hit it, I had wiped it out. <laughs> so I'm just so happy to be here. I'm happy that I love my work. I absolutely adore. So, of course, I, the lights still scare me. The lights will always scare me. Let's just face it. They're too bright. When I was a housewife, if I ever had this much light on me, when I woke up, I had another kid. <laughs> Phyllis and I will be right back with the Green Hornet, Joe Pine, Paul Revere and the Raiders, Donna Lauren, Cato, and my special guest, Batman, Adam West. We'll be right back. Ah. His, his cigar. Oh, thank you. Joy, joy, you gotta love it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce this time a very... What's that, right in the middle of the poem? <laughs> What is it, a phone call? Telephone for you, Mr. Burrow. Thank you, but you shouldn't be on camera. Why not? You're getting away with it. I was... <laughs> Brilliant. You will see him next week. Hello. <laughs> Who is this? O'Donna oh, Lauren. The beautiful young singing star with all the hit records. <laughs> Honey, it's a good thing you called, because you're on. Yes, you are. <laughs> Feeling sad and lonely, there's a service I can render. Tell the one who loves you only, I can be so warm and tender. Call me, don't be afraid, you can call me. Maybe it's late, but just call me. Tell me and I'll be around. And when it seems your friends desert you, there's somebody Oh. 
don't forget me, cause if you let me, I will always stay by you. You've got to trust me, that's how it must be. There's so much that I can do. Have you heard of poor, poor Donna? Bless her heart and she's a goner. So is Laura and how she shows it. And she thinks that no one knows it. Don't breathe a word of it. Nobody's heard of it. Promise you won't tell us no. When he's near, she's acting foolish. And she just can't play it coolish. She's way out and all a flutter. And her heart just melts like butter. Shh, shh. Don't breathe a word of it. Nobody's heard of it. Promise you won't tell us so. I've got a secret. from last week. <laughs> why are you applauding? I didn't say anything. That's why I'm applauding. <laughs> All right, never mind. Now, will you please keep quiet so I can go on with the show? Hey, hey, Barrow. Yeah? I want to see that star on your show tonight. Which one? You know, the one with the mask. Batman or the Green Hornet? No, Phyllis Diller. <laughs> Phyllis Diller was just on and she doesn't wear a mask. That's what I want to see her about. <laughs> All right, now, would you do me a favor? I'm not going to put up with you anymore. I'll put up with you last week. I have a show to do, and let me do it. Now, if you don't, if you don't go home, I'm going to call the police. I don't blame you. You need all the protection you can get. <laughs> no, uh... Well, if you didn't like me the first week, why did you come back? My doctor told me to go where it's quiet. <laughs> Now, there's a show that has to go on, you understand? I'm trying to get some laughs. There's a phone booth. This is a job for Superman. <laughs> All right, please, don't be funny. We don't need Superman. We've got Batman, and he's just as smart. If he's so smart, how come he wears his jockey shorts outside his phone? <laughs> okay, you feel better now? You got in your big joke for the night? Now, will you let me get on with the show? Ladies. Go ahead, who's stopping you? You are! You're interrupting me all the time. If you keep cutting me off, how's anybody know what I'm going to say? By watching Johnny Carson the night before. <laughs> you all agree with him. Now, please be quiet, please. Did you come in here to be entertained or not? That's right. What's right? I came in here to be entertained, and I'm not. <laughs> no, you're not. But I'd like to see you get up here and be funny. You first. <laughs> I dare you, wise guy. Why don't you come down here in front of this audience on the stage and entertain? I should. 
Oh, you should. Can you sing? No. Can you dance? No. Can you get laughs? No. Now, what can you do? Just what you're doing. <laughs> Don't worry about me getting laughs. Comedy is in my blood. You better get a transfusion. <laughs> You get your kicks this way, coming here and throwing lines at me. Well, sort of. You see, I'm just having fun, because I'm celebrating tonight. Celebrating what? The 10th anniversary, uh, uh, anniversary of my unemployment insurance. <laughs> Repeat that for the East Coast. <laughs> what are you celebrating? The 10th anniversary of my unemployment insurance. Now I know why you're unemployed. You can't talk. <laughs> you mean to say that you haven't worked in 10 years? Why don't you go out and get a job? I can't. Why? Account of my health. What's the Every matter Every time you? I close my eyes, I see black and white spots. Really? Did you see a doctor? No, just black and white spots. <laughs> well, can't you find a job that's not too strenuous? What kind of work do you do? I've been out of work so long, I forgot what kind of work I'm out of. <laughs> do you have a trade? Yeah, my wife, or anything you got. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, hold it up there, will you please? In the gallery. What, uh... What have you got against your wife? Have you seen her? No. That's it. She looks like something you've never seen. <laughs> what does she look like? Mansfield. Jane? Senator. <laughs> that I can't believe. You must be kidding. No, I'm not. You're not? In fact, I wrote to the Senator. I didn't think it was fair. You, it was, th was it fair that your wife looks like him? No, that I should pay the same amusement tax as Richard Burton. <laughs> Spritzer, I don't want any more talk about anything about your wife. You understand? I've got a lot of stars to introduce yet. Batman, Green Hornet, Cato, and Paul Revere and the Raiders, Joe Pine. Joe Pine? Joe Pine. Joe Pine, the one who insults people and tears them apart and leaves them battered and bleeding. I thought you didn't want to talk about my wife. <laughs> Forget it. I have to introduce Batman, Adam West. Ladies oh. and gentlemen. Well, what's Batman doing here? What do you mean, what's he doing here? That's a silly question. Why would anybody be here? I've been asking myself. All right, shut up, please. <laughs> Adam West is here, and the reason that he's here, he wants to be on a comedy show. Well, tell him to keep trying. Someday he will be. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. I never heard of this. And now, he's crazy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a wonderful singer I know you're going to really enjoy. He has charm, talent, looks, and a fantastic voice. <laughs> now, for my first song... <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'd like you to meet the most beautiful crew in the world and their talented skipper, ladies and gentlemen, Adam West. Let's bring him on. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where the living is. This is the life. Movie or there. This is the life. You've waited long enough. Man, you've arrived. Breathe in that air. Wine and perfume. Silver and candlelight. Children make way. the life for me. House at the beach. Reuben dinner's at 21. And wait a smile. When you walk in. And tailored suits. Shirts with your monogram. Feel of real silk. Next to your skin, top of the heap, first cabin all the way, how sweet the song, when you belong, nothing but moss, that's how it's gonna be. Well, this is the life for me. Baby, baby, down to meet that wonderful life. The whole gang of living. You 
tell you something. I, I heard of uh, Rock Hudson, Tab Hunter, Rip Torn, but I never heard of Deckhand. <laughs> but that, that would make a very good actor's name. And you're being, you being a great actor, I think you should get ready to put on your Batman outfit, because you're about to do a scene with this latest gentleman, Adam West. Thank you very much. He's too much. Wonderful guy. Phyllis Diller and I, ladies and gentlemen, are about to do our version of the Joe Pine show with Joe Pine. <laughs> you got a dirty laugh, do <laughs> That's uh, the Joe Pine show. That's one of those late controversial talk shows where people get up and speak their minds. So don't go away. We'll be back with uh, our version of the Joe Pine show called The Merchant of Venom. We'll be back in one <laughs> Good evening, my name is Joe Pine. I guess you know yours. Now, if you haven't anything good to say, come down here and say it anyway. Anything goes, and if I don't like what you say, what goes is you. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Saturday night in time for the highly charged Joe Pine Show. Tonight, Joe's guests include a man who claims he's been to Venus in a flying saucer. And to prove it, he's brought back a weird wife. A lady nudist who complained about redwood furniture. And a haberdasher who has maps and charts to prove Columbus was Chinese. And a beef box bursting at the seams with all sorts of opinions. And now, our opinionated but lovable Joe Pine. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. We're ready to go again. And for those of you who don't like controversy and violence, I suggest you stare at your radios. <laughs> we'll begin by turning our dock into a beef box. Would you, uh, turn around, please? <laughs> now would you, uh, state your name? Benito Mussolini. <laughs> All right, what's your beef? I was rejected by the Peace Corps. <laughs> Why don't you put your thumb in your ear and go bowling? Come on, take a walk. Get out of the dock. But job. I've known Sergeant Schreiber since he was a corporal. I know Peter Lawford first. Let me down. I have my... And now for my first guest of the evening. She claims to be the author of a fascinating book. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Samantha Ferns. Welcome, Miss Fern. I gotta get the name of the book right now. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. My book is called A Shortcut to Beauty. <laughs> A lot of people think I took too many shortcuts. Well, anyway, welcome, Miss Fern, to the show. And it says here on the back of the jacket that you once worked as a a topless waitress? Yes. How about that? <laughs> the customers kept saying, turn around, and I said, I am around. <laughs> now, Miss Byrne, let's, uh, let's get down to basics. Now, what do you do to start the day? Girls, if you want to look good in the morning, don't get up. <laughs> now, what's the first thing you do? Well, every morning I get up and I say to the mirror, 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 on the wall. Then I shave. Cut yourself this morning. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's change the subject. How do you feel about hip huggers? Oh, I like them taller than that. <laughs> Miss Fern, other than having studied beauty, what have you done for yourself? Good man, I've done everything. I even went to a psychiatrist. You kidding? Really? I went there so that I could learn to live with my looks. <laughs> and the 
made me lie face down on the couch. <laughs> He'd have to learn to live with my looks. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Fern, for being with us tonight. Now, please go out and buy her book, A Shortcut to Beauty, or Live Alone and Look. <laughs> Sample there. Now, according to my producer's notes, our next guest is a member of a notorious group of nonconformists who have rebelled against society. Let's find out what motivates their bizarre behavior. Here he is, the king of the Rat Pack. <laughs> Don't worry, man. Don't worry. I always park that way. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, man. Thought I'd never make the scene. Thought I'd never make it. Got my training wheels caught on a Boy Scout. <laughs> a drag, man. A real drag. Real drag. Now, just what do you mean? I dragged him three blocks. <laughs> Shall I get in the dock? Why don't you uh, get in the dock? I uh, would, man. Oh, it looks like a jail. Beautiful, man. Shoot the questions to me, fine, baby. Shoot them, baby. Shoot the questions to me. Well, you can begin by telling me just why you dress that way. What way? Are you kidding? My girl knit these out of steel wool. Next week, she's knit me a Volkswagen. I understand the uh, police have been trying to break you up. The cops do not bother us, baby. They have a right to have their own gang. <laughs> That's about the police. But when the fuzz gets after us to take baths, that's what I call police brutality. Police brutality. Well, you gotta take a bath sometime. What do you mean? I took a bath, man, just last year. <laughs> I drove off a bridge right into the water. <laughs> Why? Why? I left a ring around the lake. Be hey, still a moment now. Would you mind telling us how you got started in this kind of a life? Just, just where did you go wrong? Mm, you want to know. You want to know. Where I went wrong. I'll tell you how I went wrong. Ow. I went wrong when I was young, man. I got mixed up with the wrong kind of people. What kind of people? My mother and father. <laughs> That's who. <laughs> Throw them at me, cow. Throw them at me, Joe Pal. You, uh, you fellas are uh, pretty aggressive, aren't you? Yeah, true, true. I'm full of aggression and hostility. I'm just like you, Joe. Only I don't have my own show. <laughs> if you really want my opinion, I think you motorcycle bums should be locked up. Oh, Why don't you shut up? Oh, you shut up, you up me! It's a rumble. It's a rumble. I don't want them to hit me. Don't hit me, pal. I'm chicken. Don't hit me. I'm chicken. Do you tune in next week for another friendly discussion? Nope. <laughs> we'll be right back with Batman, Adam West, Van Williams, the Green Hornet, Bruce Lee, Cato, and Paul Revere and the Raiders. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And now, it's time. 
time for Milton's Mad Bad World. <laughs> Six ribs kicked in, his nose was broken, he was beat with a lead pipe, he got stabbed ten times and shot twice. Who cares? I'll be back to see you next visitor's day, Mother. coming. <laughs> One of my land, two of my ABC. <laughs> Paul Revere and the Raiders. Inside. But when you come back down, girl, you still ain't feeling right. And don't it seem like kids just keep getting harder to find? And all your kids ain't bringing you peace of mind before you find out it's too late. Girl, you better get straight. No, but not with kids. You just need help, girl. Oh, girl, you think you're gonna find yourself a little piece of paradise. You ain't happened yet, so girl, you better think twice. Oh, girl, I'm going to see no matter what you do, you'll never run away from you. And if you keep on running, you'll have to pay the price. And don't it seem like kids just keep getting harder to find? And all your kids ain't bringing you peace of mind before you find out it's too late. Girl, you better get straight. No, you don't need kids. All to of you face, that will be scary. That will be nowhere. I'm gonna help you find yourself another way Oh, you don't need kicks, girl No, girl, no, you just need help, girl I'll still Now, girl, you better get straight And don't it seem like kicks just keep getting You don't need kicks, girl No, girl Great, great. 
You know, ladies and gentlemen, the new television season is starting this week, and it is my prediction that very soon, ABC's Green Hornet show with Van Williams and Bruce Lee will become as popular as the Batman show starring Adam West. And, you know, I was just thinking, with, with every actor in the business competing for the job of villain on both of these programs, wouldn't it be funny if through a mistake in the casting office, the same actor was hired to play the villain in both shows? But both shows were being filmed at the same time. <laughs> you just stick around, and in one minute, I'll show you exactly what would happen. This is stage 12, where the Batman show is being filmed. And this is stage 13, where the Green Hornet show is being filmed at the same time. An actor named Dexter Baxter has just been hired to play the villain on both of these shows, and there's bound to be trouble. All right, all right, let's make pictures. Villain on the set. Barry, uh, Dexter Baxter on the set. <laughs> I said, do you know your lines? Yeah, I, I know my lines. I, 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 studied, I studied them all night. Mm -hmm. yeah. In this scene, you played the part of a spy. Spy? Yes. You're Japanese. I... <laughs> now I know why they made me dress this way. Is Batman ready for his entrance? Yes, sir. All right, let's try one. Quiet! Ah! Uh, ah, uh, so... I make big trap for Honorable Batman. I tell him to meet me here, and when he come here, I kill him. Hey, <laughs> uh, Batman! Ah, uh, so, Batman, we come face to face, huh? Yes, I finally found the den of the liar. Oh, no, you, you mean Raya. You're <laughs> always telling lies. You're the liar. No, I always tell lies. <laughs> I am known as the Raya. <laughs> you see? <laughs> well, liar, your evil life of crime has come to an end. Yeah. Well, that's what you think. That's what you think. Hey, I got you. I got you. Stand back. Or I shoot you with my egg roll gun. <laughs> I say, egg roll gun? Yes, egg roll gun. It shoots lychee nuts. <laughs> Very deadly. Aren't you afraid someone will hear the sound of your egg roll gun? No, not a chance. I put on one ton silencer. <laughs> Anyhow, this Chinese egg roll gun, I shoot you, and in one hour, I have to shoot you again. <laughs> you understand? No, good. Well, you don't scare me. I don't scare no. You. Start shooting on the Green Hornet set. <laughs> Where's the Green Hornet and Cato? On the set, please, Van Williams and Bruce Lee. <laughs> Ready to start shooting? Already. Have you got all the business worked out? Got it down pat. How do you feel? Great. You know what to do with the villain? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Fine. Put on your mask and we'll start with the first scene. Good. All right, let's get going. Where's the villain? Think Pussycat on the set. Behind schedule. Yes, sir. Action! And how? Oh, we're behind schedule. <laughs> Hello? Hello, this is this is the Green Hornet. Yes? Is this I mean, are you the Green Hornet? <laughs> are you the Green Hornet? Yes. Sorry, sir, I forgot my mind. Well, this is the pink pussy cat. I'm here at Senator Frisbee's house, and I'm going to steal the secret papers. Forget it, you pink pussy cat. I'm coming over and capture you, and there's nothing you can do about it. No, no. Hang on. No, no. <laughs> no. Jump. There. 
<laughs> you see? Now stay out of my way, Green Hornet. Understand? Stay out of my way. <laughs> now, for his secret papers. Ooh, I suppose they're behind that picture in the safe, behind that painting. I... <laughs> The sandpaper, my fingertips. <laughs> I'm going to open the safe. <laughs> nah. Now, I'm going to get the paper. Isn't that ridiculous? How come the center frisbee doesn't have a guard to have a guard this safe? <laughs> Sound like the Green Hornet is driving the Batmobile. Green Hornet and Cato, huh? All right, Pink Pussycat. Hand over those secret papers. Yeah, uh, you can't scare me with that gun. Oh no? No, you can't. This is my gas gun. Yeah, well, don't shoot at me. I got enough. Yeah. <laughs> Understand? I don't need a weapon to handle you, Pink Pussycat. You don't? No. Uh, don't move because. This tail is loaded. <laughs> and I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. So don't move. <laughs> what are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. One did it Pick up the scene where we left off with Batman. <laughs> Where's the guy who plays the villain? Villain on the set. <laughs> right. Go back to the scene where we start with the broken plate. Yes, that's right. You ready, Batman? Yes, yes, sir. All right. Action! All right. This will change your wicked ways, liar. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pussycat went it on the Green Hornet set. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. We haven't got all day. Where's the big pussycat? Big pussycat on the set. <laughs> Let's go. Where's the villain? Villain on the set. I'm here. I'm here. All right. We'll take it from the fight scene. The fight scene? Yeah. Are you ready, Batman? Yes, of course. I'm ready. Ain't All there, right. Ain't there any dancing in his picture? <laughs> no. No dancing. Action! Liar. Come out of that 
Close it, big pussy cat. <laughs> Don't be a coward, big pussy cat. Come out. I got him. I got him. I'll get you with my gun foo. Your gun foo? Like this. Wait a minute, what? Die! 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 Oh, no, no. Ah, ah, no, no, no. Back here. No, no, no. No, no. How are you? You ready for some lunch? Yeah. Say, we had a great rehearsal today. How about you? Oh, we had a great rehearsal. And right after lunch, we're going to do it for real. <laughs> for real? Oh, no. I'd also like to thank my guests, Phyllis Diller, Adam West, Van Williams, Bruce Lee, Paul Revere and the Raiders, Joe Pine and Donna Lauren. We've, we've had a lot of fun tonight. I hope that you did too. Next week, we have a great show launch. Do you like it? Thank you. Thank you too much. Thank you. I was about to say, next week, we have, a, I think, a great lineup. Martha Ray, Steve Allen, Jane Meadows, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Lloyd Faxton and so many other surprises like uh, Robert Six, Ginny Two, and Johnny Seven <laughs> will appear on our stage and add each other up. <laughs> We're also expecting Mickey Rooney's stand on. <laughs> and a TV first, Brigitte Bardot will appear on our stage fully dressed. <laughs> but the audience will be nude. Buster Crab will demonstrate how to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation without becoming emotionally involved. <laughs> and Bill Bailey will be here to show a picture of a home that he hates. <laughs> and as an extra added attraction, right here on this stage, we will have an exhibition of Billy Sol Estes checks. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun. So until next week, ladies and gentlemen, may I leave you with this one thought. There's just one place for me, and that's near you. It's been heaven for me to be near you. And if I brought you just one smile, it's made this night worthwhile. I love you all. of Bufferin. With Bufferin, you've got more going for you against headache pain. More than the simple aspirin tablets. Bufferin. And by Johnson Wax, makers of beautiful new Glade Mist that feels cool as it clears and freshens the air. Thank you.